a huge part of my healing journey, and I would almost argue 50% of each of my areas of emotional dysfunction, the 50% of my healing journey has been just figuring out the emotional origin story of that behavior pattern and emotional pattern that I'm working on. And so that's 50% of it is just figuring out where did it come from? How did it start? And, and I will tell you, I will tell you, I have yet to, and I've coached hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leaders over the past 20 years. And more specifically, the last four years in the area of emotional intelligence, but a truckload of leaders over the past 20 plus years. And I will tell you, in my experience with the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leaders that I've coached over the past couple of decades, what, if you observe X behavior, X, un, let's say unwanted, unpleasant, unproductive, unhealthy behavior, and maybe even unpleasant, uncomfortable emotional pattern as well, there is always a story. Always. Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast, where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself, both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. This episode is sponsored by Classical Conversations. Since 1997, Classical Conversations has been equipping families like yours with the resources to homeschool with confidence following a classical curriculum rooted in a Christ-centered worldview alongside other families in a local community. Homeschooling is doable with Classical Conversations. Check out classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons for more information. Again, that's classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons, G-I-B-B-E-N-S. What is going on, EQ Gangsters? So this is an introduction for episode 348. I This episode was actually <clears throat> in response to another coach <clears throat> who sent me a question. He's he's maybe a newer coach, uh, maybe been coaching maybe for a year or so. Now he's a he's actually a retired full bird colonel in the military. Actually, my, my, one of my college classmates, incredible dude, amazing, amazing guy, and actually a war hero in and of his own right, and who who's now starting to coach leaders and stuff. And so he said, "Hey Noble, you've been coaching a lot longer than me." I have recently received some assessments from some EQ assessments from some ladies that I'm coaching, three different uh, different folks, and and they they scored low in self regard in the air, one of the aspects of emotional intelligence, which is self regard. You know, how do you feel about yourself? And you know, what are some tips and recommendations and suggestions to to help somebody? that may be struggling with low self-regard, which as somebody that has struggled with low self-regard for four decades, <laughs> well, it even getting close to longer that I'm still working on that area, you know, what are some tips? And so anyway, this episode is in response to that question, how do you help leaders that struggle with low self-regard? Excellent question. Why does it seem like in your scenario, you're coaching three ladies and based on their EQ assessments, it seems like, again, in your anecdotal experience, those three ladies all have scored low on self-regard in that category, the aspect of emotional intelligence. So I will tell you, it it is a bit anecdotal. That is not super uncommon for leaders period. And I've done, I don't know, maybe close to 200 assessments now of leaders, military, civilian, corporate executives, mid-level managers, different industries. So a pretty good spectrum of, of assessments and leaders. 
and categories and industries and ages. And that one actually, again, is not uncommon, the, the self-regard for people to have kind of lower self-regard. So for me, now, my coaching approach may be different than a lot of other coaches. And I've developed my coaching approach based on how I have grown in my own emotional growth, emotional intelligence journey. I was one of the guys who had incredibly low self-regard because of my imposter syndrome, my super high insecurities, my self-hatred, my self-condemnation, my self-sabotage, you know, again, name the emotional dysfunction. And I, I have probably dealt with it, working through it still, you know, kind of thing. So that's where I have developed my coaching kind of methodology is, is how have I been able to grow over the past four years, working on myself every single day, the past four years. Okay. The, but the bigger question, how do you deal with somebody that has low self-regard, be it women, men? For me, I like to see if I can help the leader that I'm working with figure out where did that start? Where, when, and how did that low self-regard start? Did it start at five years old? Did it start at seven years old? Did it start at 13 years old? Did it start at 19 years old? Was it feedback you got from when you were a child from your friends, from your parents, from your grandparents, from aunts and uncles? You know, again, what was that dynamic? Where did that come from? Part of a huge part of my healing journey, and I would almost argue 50% of each of my areas of emotional dysfunction, the 50% of my healing journey has been just figuring out the emotional origin story of that behavior pattern and emotional pattern that I'm working on. And so that's 50% of it is just figuring out where did it come from? How did it start? And, and I will tell you, I will tell you, I have yet to, and I've coached hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leaders over the past 20 years. And more specifically, the last four years in the area of emotional intelligence, but a truckload of leaders over the past 20 plus years. And I will tell you, in my experience with the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leaders that I've coached over the past couple of decades, if you observe X behavior, X, let's say unwanted, unpleasant, unproductive, unhealthy behavior, and maybe even unpleasant, uncomfortable emotional pattern as well, there is always a story. Always. Again, based on my experience of two decades and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leaders, there's always a story. Always. So my role as the coach is maybe I'm not the one that's going to be able to figure out what that story is, but can I help the leader that I'm working with figure out, figure out what that story is for themselves? Some of them, depending on what their self-awareness is, which is another element of EQ, maybe they can figure that out on their own by me asking questions. Sometimes with a working with a leader that has lower self-awareness, they are not able to discover or figure out what that what the connection is. They may say, well, man, I think it was, I mean, I, there's a, a leader I'm working with right now who said, man, I had a really rough, rough, rough childhood. And not just from my parents, but also my grandparents and even the relatives. So like, that whole family is dysfunctional from what it sounded like. And so, and I was asking him, okay, so what do you think the connection is between your childhood, those experiences that you shared just generally, you didn't get into detail, which is fine, but those experiences to the behavior that you're exhibiting today. And this leader is, is way into adulthood, like midlife, we'll say midlife and, 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 
he's, he's like, I have no idea. I, I honestly have no idea what the connection is. And so I said, okay, so let's, let's think about it. Cause that's another thing too, is if you have a low self-awareness leader who also has not invested the time into critical thinking, learning how to think, learn how to think about thinking. Again, as a coach, you may have to help them make some of those connections or at least ask more specific questions to make that 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 leap a little less high and challenging for that particular leader until maybe through your coaching experience they're able to make that connection themselves. They start where they start to learn how to think and how to reflect and how to, you know, as their self-awareness grows throughout the the arc of your coaching sessions, depending on how many sessions you've got. Okay, so that's one approach. Another approach that I like to do is when I'm working with somebody in the area of self-regard is of, of lower self-regard, is to list out there's a few different exercises that I like to do. So one question is, I like to ask, what have been over the course of your life, so think from as early as you can remember to the most recent time, what have been those areas that you have been complimented on the most from other people? Again, as so not just recent, I'm talking as long as you can remember, as early as you can remember, boom. So that's one, that's one list of things and sometimes they can come up with stuff. Again, sometimes they're not able to come up with stuff. If possible, that's helpful. Another list I like them to, to create. Write a list of your, your what, what you perceive as your positive traits, qualities, characteristics, and strengths. If they have taken the assessment Strengths Finder 2.0, that's even better because now that's that's you know from a, from a, a third party, unbiased, unknown arbiter of of their strengths and stuff. So that's super helpful for someone because now you've got a list from a, a very well accredited organization that's that's providing this data about this individual based on the assessment that they took. And now it's a matter of, okay, if they did take that assessment, okay, how, what are some ways that you can start recognizing more intentionally when you see these top five strengths at work? And I'm just using top five. You could say top one, top two, top three, top 10. Uh, smaller is better. So what are some ways that you can start becoming more aware, which is also a great self-awareness exercise, in when these strengths are showing up throughout your day, personally and professionally? That's another exercise. Another one is, so when you write down, so if they haven't taken that assessment, write down you know, your strengths, qualities, traits, characteristics, talents, and just make a list, as many as you could possibly come up with. And then based on my experience with that particular leader, what I like to do is I like to confirm and affirm some of those strengths, qualities, traits, characteristics that I have observed in my coaching session with them. And may, heck, it may be even one session, two sessions, three sessions, but you know, as a coach, the better you get at social awareness and observing the nuances of people you can start to listen to their verbiage, their character, their integrity, their, their strengths, weaknesses, that kind of stuff, just by them expressing themselves. And I like to keep track of that also myself. And, and then when appropriate, I will, when, if or when appropriate, I like to bring those up especially and specifically with those leaders that are struggling in the area of self-regard. And I'll even, and, and again, the more that, so the most, what's the most powerful form of revelation of, well, revelation too, of realization is self-realization. So the more I can get them to self-realize what I am seeing in themselves, that's even more effective than me saying, 
hey, here are two or three areas, five areas that I'm seeing as your strengths. It's even more effective if I can get them to self-realize through effective questions. But let's say I, I know you're, you're excellent at strategic thinking, and, and I noticing that based on how you are explaining how you solved a particular challenge at work. I say, okay, hey, tell me one of the challenges that you're currently facing at work. I'm facing this particular challenge. Or what's one of the challenges you have faced in work? How did you handle that particular challenge? Let's say you handled it well or successfully handled and navigated a challenge at work. Explain to me that what, what, that, what that scenario was. What was the challenge and how did you successfully handle that? In them sharing what the challenge was, how they successfully handled it, I will be able to pull out those strengths that they have when they, imp when they, when they successfully navigated that particular scenario, that particular challenge. And, and I will, so now let's say I know, let's say one of their strengths again is strategic thinking. Now I'll say, okay, what do you feel? So based on you successfully navigating that challenge at work, what were the strengths that you had to have and implemented in order to successfully navigate that challenge? And then I, I'll listen. And, and again, depending on their self-awareness, is going to be how they, how they answer that question and, and, and to what degree they're able to notice. Some of them are like, I, I have no idea. I just kind of came up with that on the fly. Or, well, you know, I had, I had strategic thinking. I, I, I'm a learner. So I'd learned a particular solution three days earlier and was able to apply that at work. You know, uh, I, I'm I'm empathetic leader. I am a great active listener. I can develop people very well. You know, very I'm great at developing people. I am, you know, an influencer. Whatever they say. So if they have great self awareness, maybe they'll come up with three, four, five different strengths. The point is helping them increase their awareness around their strengths. And I may have them do that exercise multiple times. Give me another challenge that you've overcome at work. How, how did you do it? Let's, let's talk through it. I want to get them in the practice of being able to notice, oh man, okay. And then if you do, you have them do this, you know, multiple times, two, three, four times of two or three, four different scenarios. Now you and they can start identifying, okay, well, let's, let's look back at these three or four different challenges that you successfully navigated at work. What are the trends? So in, in challenge one, you listed these four strengths. Challenge two, you listed these three strengths. Challenge three, you listed these seven strengths. Challenge four, you listed these two strengths. What, let's circle the trends in all four of these challenges. What were the themes, your strengths, your qualities, your characteristics? And now you can kind of start to help, again, for your own awareness as a coach, but also for them to be like, oh, snap, okay, I you know, this is not just a one time I got lucky at solving this problem, this particular challenge. I've got a track record. And then something else I like to do is another fun exercise I like, I like having them do is I call it a victory journal or a David journal from the Bible reference. If they have a faith background, if they don't, then I'll just call it a victory journal. But in the Bible, in 1 Samuel, don't quote me on it, 15 or 17, the whole story of David and Goliath, right? You had Ranger David, who, who was a, a, a secret squirrel shepherd. And I, I'm joking, but you'll see where I'm going with secret squirrel. And then you've got Goliath, who is, you know, conventional army guy, nine feet tall, 350 pounds. I have no idea how, how much he weighed. I'm making this up. But he was a big, giant dude and probably washboard abs like you've got, bro. And, and this guy had been fighting since he was a kid, Goliath. David was a kid. Literally, he was a teenager. Probably was still using proactive, bro. I don't even know if proactive is around anymore. But zits, you know what I mean? Didn't even have his, his uh, Israeli driver's license yet for the, old, for the old chariot, you know what I mean? And, and when, and I'll, I've got a whole super neat story behind that, sharing that, but to condense it to get to the point, when King Saul 
said, hey, let me, who's this punk kid wanting to take out Goliath? David shows up and, you know, he had his, his Chuck Taylor Converse All-Stars on. He had his, you know, st- socks pulled up to his, to his knees and, and, you know, he's, he's rocking his, his, you know, old school worn out sling and big King Saul, the Potai president of the Israel says, David, you're a punk kid, dude. You can't take out Goliath. This guy's been fighting longer than you've been alive. And what did Ranger David say? Secret squirrel, Ranger David, probably special operations guy, David, 16, 17. He said, what was the first thing when Dave, when Saul said, you're a punk kid, you, you're going to get smoked by this dude. This guy's going to smoke you like swoosher sweets, bro. What did Ranger David say? Oh, hey, big Saul, big potai, I know you've been sitting in your air-conditioned chambers all day, and you're not seeing what's going on in the battlefield or in the shepherd spot where I'm you know, running my sheep. I have killed the lion and a bear with my manos, because he could speak Spanish also, Ranger David, he could habla. With my bare manos, I smoked these two with the help of my God. Me and my God are an unstoppable force. I'm, I'm actually going to smoke this dude, and he's going to have a big giant headache when I'm done with this guy, meaning whew, he's going to be D-U-N done. So the point is of that story is how often when we face adversity, our souls in our life that say, you can't do that job. You're not good enough to, to make these amount of sales. You're not, you're not good enough to, to navigate these relationships. You're not a good parent. You're not a good leader. You're not whatever, right? Whatever the stories are. And I'm still working through that same playlist, that same negative playlist and script myself. Now, thankfully, I'm way better than I used to be. What, what do we normally come up with is our playlist of, oh man, you're right, King Saul. You're right. I do suck. I am terrible. I have no game. I have no skills. I have no strengths. I have no qualities. I have no positive traits or attributes. That's how I did it for four decades. So what I'm working, and I actually have this in real for real, I'm doing this myself for the past three years. Every time that me and God take down a lion or a bear, proverbial lion or a bear, I document it. I put down what that lion or bear was, what that challenge was, what that adversity was, what that King Saul was, and I and I date it. And then how me and God overcame that particular challenge or obstacle. And I've got a whole big giant list. So the next time my next King Saul shows up and says, dude, you can't, you, you don't have what it takes. You're not enough. You're behind. You're slow. You don't have the brains. You don't have the intellect, whatever. Boom. I go to my, my battle drill, my muscle memory. I pull up my victory list, my David journal, my W list, my wins, my win column and go through all my wins and be like, oh, no, 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 no. Me and God, we got this, man. We got this. So, and, and it's a great exercise that when, not if, but when I start going in the dumps, which is part of the human experience, valleys is part of the human experience, boom, let me pull myself out of the valley through my victory list. Now, before I pull myself out of the valley, I like to learn so I don't want to get I don't want to get out of a valley before I've learned whatever lesson or lessons I'm supposed to learn in the valley. When I'm ready to go out of that valley, I start reading through my victory list, my W list, my David list, my David journal to go read through all the lions and bears and and, and Goliaths that me and God have have overcome and, and, and beat and defeated. So that's another great thing. And then another thing is another exercise is each day, this is a great self-awareness exercise, have those leaders 
pay attention to just throughout the day, each time, each scenario when they have exhibited or demonstrated a positive trait, characteristic, quality, or strength in a given scenario. And again, let them start their own W list. Man, when I talk to the boss, man, I maintain my, my calm and I maintain my composure, even though they were, they were having a low EQ moment and yelling at me, I remain calm, cool, and collected. When I had a tough customer on the phone, through empathetic listening, active listening, and validating and affirming that upset customer's emotions, I was able to talk them off the ledge, calm them down, and, and then get to their real challenge so that I could help them solve that particular issue or problem, which took, took self-awareness to know where I'm at emotionally in that moment. It took social awareness. It took self-management skills. It took empathetic listening. It took active listening. It took attention to detail. It took problem solving. It took humility. It took, right? You can come up with all kinds of strengths and qualities. So boom, as they get better, recognize, oh man, okay, I do have some traits and qualities that, that are significant and helpful and have a real world business impact and business result. You know, it's not just warm, fuzzy. Hey, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm good at, at, you know, bathing in essential oils or, or, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? And, and I mean, you know, no offense if you dig essential oils, I mean, that's fine. So, so helping them recognize for themselves, what their strengths are through these these focused, practical exercises is also a very helpful tool. And then the next time that you 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 link up with them, ask them, okay, let's let's pull out your W list, your victory journal, your David list, and let's let me hear some of those different scenarios, along with the corresponding strengths that you used, so that I and I want to hear you explain this to me. Those are some ideas and, and other ways and exercises that I use to help somebody become more self-aware of their strengths and positive attributes and gifts and talents and, and qualities. Most of us, many of us are awesome at my failures, my shortcomings, my weaknesses, my dumb decisions, my, you know, I, I, that's all I've got that on lockdown, right? Which that's so helping someone come up with the, the positive stuff is, is a great, great thing. And then, and then obviously creating that as a habit, because again, a lot of times our minds are great at, at naturally producing weeds, mental and emotional weeds. And this can help to tend that mental and emotional garden so we can get better at recognizing because the brain will will automatically grow what it focuses on. What you see grows. What you see gets strengthened. What you avoid, what you what you don't what you don't feed, starves. So I want to starve my weeds by not focusing on my failures and shortcomings and weaknesses and bad decisions, da, da, da. Not that I can't learn from them, learn from them, but not focus on them, not obsess on them, not be consumed by them and start to develop a new sight picture, getting the habit of getting a proper sight picture, proper sight alignment on those positive attributes, those strengths and qualities that I have. Another great exercise is asking some homies, asking your trusted circle, your inner circle, hey, y'all, I'm working on this project. I've got a coach I'm working with. Would you all mind just sending three, four, five different traits or qualities that you see in me that, that are positive, that you like about me, that you think are valuable personally 
and that you think are valuable, even uh, not just personally, but also professionally, what what are some areas, traits, qualities, characteristics you see in me, both personally and professionally, that you appreciate about me, that you think make me valuable personally and professionally? So hope, uh, hope that helps.